Today we want to design the rear wing profiles for a 2026 F1 car and I want to show you what to look out for. First of all, I got a new idea for the floorboard. It's a completely different design and similar to the sideboards teams were using pre-2022 in the complicated bargeboard area. And a complete redesign at this stage of a new rule set is normal as you get new ideas all the time and simply redesign this area. So this floorboard is using the area ahead of 825mm to freely design an outwashing first element. It is followed by three upwashing horizontal elements and if you cut through them in any direction you see a maximum of three sections, so it's legal. It also complies with the 15 degree angle in top view and although this element should create inwash it can now let air through depending on how much we close it and if air flows through it even pushes it up. So we get some downforce. The main function however is that depending on the opening angle we can trap the air in front of the side pod and create a high pressure zone behind the front wheel which helps to push the front rear wake outboard. So I expect similar designs on the first cars. But now moving to the rear wing. Article 311.1 describes the rear wing profiles. So we create a folder and we take our regulation box, the reference volume rear wing profiles. The regulations say that the profiles need to be inside this box. We can take the profiles we previously used for the floorboard and simply paste them in here and change the direction. After adapting them, we position the first element. Since we are allowed to have up to three elements, we position three elements in the box on the inner side and we do the same thing on the outboard side. So we have two sections. We then connect them with splines with Y tangency as guides and create the surfaces. Now we have three elements in the regulation box. Section C allows us only to have a single section per volume for X and Y cuts, but two for Z cuts. Why? Because if you have cambered profiles, you will get two intersections in Z. Section D makes sure the first element doesn't have a too extreme angle. So we design a point 40 mm from the most rearward point on the underside and measure the tangent angle, which is fine here. Section E wants to avoid concave radii, but instead of just saying that there shouldn't be a concave radius of less than 100 mm anywhere in the profile, the regulations work with visibility, which opens the loophole for teams to shadow parts. So if you cannot see it from above, you can do whatever you want. This 100 mm concave radius rule was introduced to avoid having air inlets in the upper profiles in the pre-DRS time. So by shadowing this area, teams could have air inlets in the profiles again. Whatever that could be good for. Anyway, we use the porcupine analysis to measure the radius and see that it's legal here. The shape of the regulation box asks for bendy wing shapes. Section F makes sure that the angles don't get too extreme and we are fine here. And section G allows a slot gap between 8 and 12 mm between elements. To check that, we design circles between the elements and measure their diameter. At the track, the FIA will test the slot gap with a stick with a sphere at the tip. Because the wings are curved and not straight, make sure to check the slot gap along the whole width and not just in one spot. Otherwise, you will get disqualified like Haas in Monaco 2024. Standard mistake here is to take the wrong point at the trading edge to design the circle, which gives you a wrong number, so zoom in and avoid that mistake. And in the end, we are allowed to add a gurney flap with a maximum of 10 mm. So, now we have a free element rear wing in the regulation box and it's legal. Now we start optimizing it and think about what do we really want from it. First of all, we want to add the 10 mm gurney flap and it needs to be within the regulation box since it's considered to be part of the rear wing profiles. So the last element needs to sit a bit lower if we want a 90 degree angle. In article 3.11.6 it is defined that the rear wing flap can change angle and the rear wing flap are the rear wing profiles except the first element. In other words, the second and third element can change angle while driving. 
which means that aerodynamically we want element 2 and 3 to do the majority of downforce production, which also means drag. And if we put them flat on the straights, we lose most of that drag and can be faster. So we reposition the elements and add a 10mm gurney for a high downforce wing for the 2026 regulations. We end up with a wing which fits inside the rack box, but it could fill it a bit more on the lower side. Now we would start the first CFD and fine tuning of the concept. Important will be the opening angle and how we can get further advantages from this, like shadowing the gurney flap in a small separation bubble from the leading edge of one element. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into F1 design and if you did, consider to become a B-Sport Club member for early access and more videos like this. See you next time.